Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode I was planning to start off by landing the Lunapod G here uh, with the Gemini lander engines uh, but I noticed uh, that I had forgotten the ladder and that's going to make uh, entering and exiting this particular capsule a bit complicated. So yeah, uh, we need to have a Kerbal add a ladder to this but uh, worse than that um, we don't have an engineer on board this station right now we have three pilots so that's not very good planning and of course we don't have a KIS container with uh, ladders handy uh, we could have had an engineer grab the one from this capsule here but uh, I think we need to figure something out so yeah, we're going to need to uh, send an engineer over, maybe some spare ladders, maybe some other spare parts. Also, uh, more solar arrays. It's uh, down on electric charge and it has trouble recharging like this. Of course, Gemini capsule takes a lot of charge, but uh, just in general, I would like to send a solar array over. So I think we need to take a look at station construction. At the same time, we are constructing the crew master. So, PAB. Uh, Crewmaster launch is checking along. It'll be ready in 44 days. That's a test, right? We still need to test it. Um, it's probably got a lot of work to do. And really, that's where a lot of my interest is, even though I would like to get this uh, system sorted out as well. So uh, this is topped off as far as fuel is concerned. Made sure of that. But yeah, while I was uh, right-clicking uh, to make sure it was all full of fuel, I noticed a lack of ladders, so oh, uh, we might want some electric charge in here too. See, I mean, uh, it diminished all the electric charge because it, I guess, well, of course, our orientation is not great, but it doesn't have a real big solar array of the kind that we really need here. I think what we need to do is maybe attach a big solar array on this side would be good. Uh, that would make sense. So yeah, some station building to take care of before I really decide to land this pod. Okay, so the first of our missions that got constructed was the solar truss and it also carries an inventory box which has our ladders. So let me see if I can access the container here. It's a little bit wobbly up here. Um, but yeah, we've got the mobility enhancers. I didn't realize how much volume this uh, mobility enhancer takes up. If you take a look at it, its volume is 1,483 liters. That's huge considering the container is only 4,300. So that was a surprise. You can only put one of those in there, but I did uh, pack one of these as well and a bunch of these small ones. Actually, those are handier because they're a lot smaller and uh, cost uh, is very low. And yeah, you can fit a lot of them in there. Unfortunately, they do not stack, so you can't just pack a huge amount. But anyway, uh, let's get KOS up, make sure we're controlling from the right place. The truss is more or less identical to the one that's on our Earth orbit station. Uh, it, and the Earth orbit station one had enough fuel to do, I don't know if this is close enough to highlight. I need to see the controller on the top of this. Uh, you, you can sort of, oh, there it is. Okay. There we go, that one. It's not always the case that it's like the bottom one or the top one. In fact, uh, oh, come on. Uh, yeah, it gets shuffled, so I always need to check. It's probably more likely to end up the bottom one, but I'm not sure. All right, so everything seems to be okay. And we are lined up with the moon, so run. Fiji 2-1. I tried to put it on the Fiji 1, uh, Fiji 11, um, but that did not work out. It didn't have enough delta V to push it to the moon. Okay. And we're off. Alright, nice smooth trajectory here. Okay, single engine cutout, and so we're continuing on just the one F1 engine. 
Okay, and that's the end of the first stage, separation, and the second stage is lit. Actually, I think I did not set a fairing separation altitude for this, because it was previ previously used to launch a crude capsule instead, but I'm not sure. Let me double check. Yep, it would seem not. So, manual fairing separation. And there's our truss. Okay, and that's it. We are in orbit. 222 by 166, a good orbit for a transfer. And yeah, 4,440 meters per second. This stage has plenty. And uh, the upper portion has about 1,300 to make orbit around the moon and dock. So that should be good enough too. Okay, turning towards the node, and fuel is settled, ignition. So we'll still have quite a bit of inclination with respect to the station once we get there, so we'll do a burn once we enter Lunar SOI to fix that, and then we'll capture. And so uh, this thing has a bunch of fuel in this tank here and plenty of controllability with the Delta Avionics unit, and of course, uh, tons of power thanks to the solar rays. So we should be good. I plan to dock this to the Apollo docking port on the opposite side of the science lab. Obviously, the free docking port on the science lab. It will turn out that we have a bit of spare fuel in this stage, so we'll, we'll just have a tag along. We do have enough power to supply anyway, and we'll see if it can help us out once we reach the moon. It only has one ignition left though, so the best it can do is help us correct the inclination with respect to the station once we enter Lunar SOI. Either that, or I can plot a single maneuver to do both, correct the inclination and get into orbit at the same time. Depends how much of this is left over once we get there. Okay, so we are in Lunar SOI, there's the moon, and I decided that the best thing to do is to do it as a single combined maneuver instead of correcting the inclination first because we have 1070 meters per second of delta V and this has just one ignition left. Otherwise, if it had two ignitions left, we could do the inclination correction and then make orbit, but as it is, we'll just do both at the same time. That leaves us with sort of a lopsided orbit here. It includes a radial component because we have to do the maneuver close to the ascending or descending node uh, in order to correct it. And you can see that happening there. So yeah, it's a bit complicated, but uh, the net result is we end up in this orbit here. And we'll go with that since it'll only require about uh, 114 meters per second from the truss's own fuel, and that's a good deal. That means we can deliver some extra fuel to the station. Well, of course, I wasn't including boil off with that calculation, but still, we will be able to deliver some fuel to the station is the important thing. Okay, we are actually past periapsis because of where the node is. Okay, I think that's close enough. Ignition. Okay, well we've got some space junk. Separation and the Gemini lander engines. Up, 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 no, don't chase it, don't chase it. Okay, just stop there. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, 0.78 degrees. Can we improve on that? No. No, we can't. Alright. Okay, so we've got a point there that we cross at. And it's not showing us any sort of rendezvous there. That's annoying. I guess we'll have to wait. Let's actually plot a maneuver. That might help. Especially since I want to correct inclination at the same time. Okay. We have a rendezvous approach distance of 1.65 kilometers. Oh, there, there's Moonport 1 scooting by there. OK, 
Okay. Oh, we need to sell the fuel down. And ignition. Right when we're entering render range. Okay, I think it's time to retract the panels and pull in those arms to ease with the whole docking procedure. Okay, we are approaching the station and currently sort of on the wrong side of it. Uh, we'll have to dip down and probably want to dock on this docking port, not on the one we're currently controlling from. Okay, we are approaching and hopefully after this we will be able to retract uh, that uh, bewildering array of solar panels. It looks really haphazard having all those sticking out like that. Trying to align with the axis of the station. Don't know which way would be better. Uh, I guess this way would increase the chance that the station would block the solar panels. We can put it this way instead. Okay. And we're not quite rotated right. Can we get that right in time? Uh, well, we have connection. Hopefully. Uh, good enough. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it looks like that line is in line with those windows. Not that those windows were in line with the station properly in the first place. Okay, let's extend the solar panel arrays. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't remember the action group, so we're going to have to do these. Cannot deploy while stowed. Well, if I recall going away and coming back to them would probably solve that problem. I mean, uh, I'll probably just pop into a tracking station. These had already deployed earlier, so can't pull that one on those. Okay, as expected, uh, coming back allowed me to extend the solar panels. I decided to time warp to daylight, and I retracted the solar panels on the station itself. I retracted these here. But I left the ones on the spacecraft open, so Orpheus and Lunapod both have theirs still out. And uh, yeah, of course, most of this is visiting spacecraft. There's the science lab and the core, and that's it as far as the actual station is concerned. Well, now the solar rays, of course. But uh, yeah, there is the matter of the EVA so that we can actually attach this mobility enhancer and maybe some ladder rungs as well onto the Lunapod, uh, but we don't have an engineer here yet, so we have that part to do. And in order to do that, I've uh, decided to create the Transfer Demon. The Transfer Demon is a spacecraft that is solely meant to go from low Earth orbit to, to low lunar orbit and transfer crew back and forth. So we'll have the Lunapod or something like it going down to the lunar surface from up here and of course we will have something like the crew master uh, taking crew from the surface of the earth to low earth orbit and then transfer demon will bridge the gap the reason why we want something like transfer demon is um, uh, we'll be using nuclear engines obviously and those aren't particularly good for landing on the surface they generally have very low thrust compared to their mass so it's a lot of mass to be lugging around and of course you got the huge tanks that are necessary for nuclear engines um, uh, we are not using the what you got uh, candles on the transfer demon I thought about that but um, they were very expensive uh, compared to the engine I ultimately used which was from the KSP interstellar pack and uh, the KSP interstellar pack had a 40 kilonewton version of the Nerva it's still pretty heavy it's like two tons uh, so it's not, uh, I mean, considering Nerva is 300 kilonewtons at 9 tons, uh, it's actually worse on the thrust to weight ratio. But uh, it seemed like a good deal. It, uh, the price is set at 15,000 compared to 25,000 for Nerva, so it's not a cost savings there, but it's still cheaper than having all the candles. And uh, there were other reasons why I didn't want to use the candles, so... Um, yeah, we've got that. The candles only output 4 kilonewtons, so you not need like 10 of them to make 40. But nuclear engines are not good for landing on the surface, so we'll, we'll probably still be using uh, our hypergolic engines for that. 
for now. Of course, if we get some way of doing ISRU, uh, any ISRU system should use the fuel that it actually drills, and that's unlikely to be uh, Aerozine and N204. So we're looking at that. And uh, yeah, but there is one innovation on the Transfer Demon, and something I've added to this install that uh, you guys won't have, and but I think is a good idea. And I'll talk about that when the Transfer Demon launches. And uh, instead of, uh, I mean, we could uh, go to the Earth Orbit Station and pick up an engineer and transfer that engineer over here. But uh, as it is, I think we're going to just launch with the engineer in the pod and uh, hopefully nothing will go wrong. Uh, so it is, it is a pretty straightforward system and the rocket we've tested before, the Fiji 11. So with any luck it'll go all right? Let's find out. Okay, well this is weird because suddenly I hear, I don't know if you can hear, ambient audio. Like atmospheric effects press escape it stops it's definitely coming from the game but I don't know why we do have liquid oxygen boil off let's toggle that pump okay uh, well Megan's waiting let's see that is weird it's not the sound of an engine I don't think and I didn't really see much indication that we would have an engine on. There's certainly nothing in the staging list. Okay, this is probably uh, an inadvisable test, but let's just proceed. Okay, transfer demon. We are in line with the moon and is the Fiji 11. So run Fiji 11. And of course this has a recoverable first stage engine. And off we go. The launcher just has to launch it to low Earth orbit. After that, the transfer demon, of course, is meant to transfer itself to the moon. The Mark I advanced capsule that we have on top, it's not a capsule, it's actually a lander can, um, can carry two Kerbals. So maybe I should have sent another pilot, but we have so many pilots over there. Fortunately, we only have to launch this once. One benefit of this particular engine over the Nerva is it doesn't have limits to its ignitions. It is a solid core nuclear thermal engine. Uh, is that the one? Yeah, solid core nuclear engine. Work in progress. I, I, I adjusted its cost to make it a reasonable cost. But I'm. This is. Part of what I'm doing in this series is checking out these KSP interstellar parts to make sure they're balanced for the tech tree. So we'll see. The unlock cost was uh, reasonably hefty. Okay. Engine recovery. It didn't actually extend the little uh, floats. I don't know why. But anyway, J2 ignition. And fairing separation is successful. That's a relief. So this is our transfer demon. And again, 40 kilonewton solid core nuclear engine on the tail. And the innovation that I mentioned uh, is cold gas hydrogen thrusters. So I added a configuration to realism overhaul. All the thrusters that have the realism overhaul RCS configuration thing now have an, an additional one and it is hydrogen gas thrusters and of course this will be very useful for anything that has a lot of liquid hydrogen that could be boiled off to use for thrust and uh, it's similar to what's going to happen with the ACES stage from ULA and uh, I, I found a source uh, that said that uh, the measured uh, thruster power from a hydrogen coal gas thruster when I say thr uh, power, I mean ISP. The measured ISP was 272, and the theori theoretical maximum is 298. I've set these to 230 with our current tech level, 
and uh, they'll roughly match the hydrazine numbers so basically they're like hydrazine so yeah but of course it means that we don't have to carry separate hypergolic fuel with us and that'll save a lot of trouble let's not discuss in too much detail how advisable it is to put uh, two kerbals on the top of a liquid hydrogen tank and a nuclear engine uh, the only thing separating a Megan from the rest of this is a small tank of uh, of life support and uh, for one crew it's 37 days for two it's 18 actually more like 19 we waited on the pad for a bit the goal of the transfer demon is to have enough Delta V to transfer to the moon, get into orbit around the moon, uh, dock with uh, the station, break orbit from the moon, and return to low Earth orbit without error breaking in order to refuel and, uh, of course, pick up any further passengers. Naturally, this has uh, power from the nuclear reactor. We don't really need supplementary power, but we do have two solar panels just in case, just for safety's sake. Okay, well, we have a lot of spare fuel in here, and I guess we can reignite this engine to continue uh, to start the transfer off. All right, time to plot. Okay, we have our plot, but we... We will need to make a mid-course correction. Uh, the inclination is pretty far off. Well, it looks like our hydrogen thrusters are working. So that's nice. Because we don't have any thrusters down here on this stage, unfortunately. The lander can itself is about 1.3 tons. Uh, the engine is 2 tons. And so the rest is just uh, the fuel tank, more or less. Oh, and the life support. Life support is hardly anything. Okay, we do have to worry about actual separation on the bright side, because we had that problem with the Nerva, remember? Uh, on the bright side, we do have 37 days to rescue Megan if anything should go wrong. And we actually have many backup missions for that, including the Moonport resupply mission. Moonport resupply could uh, send more food, water, and oxygen, and also the ability to ability to um, pull Megan down to some other altitude so that it'll be easier to rescue or bring Megan into the our station around the Earth. So lots of possibilities now that we're in orbit. Okay, separation. And well here we go with the nuclear engine, ignition. Much faster ignition than the Nerva. Uh, 37 point six kilonewtons and um, 903 second ISP so a little bit less than Nerva uh, in the VAB it actually advertised 720 seconds so uh, it's tough to tell uh, the KSB interstellar parts they have their own internal way of calculating these things and they let you switch propellants so what it says in the VAB isn't always true uh, I said to 30 minutes of burn time and you can see it has about 8,000 meters per second. You calculate uh, 3,200 to go to the moon and then 800 to make orbit. So that's 4,000 right there. Uh, for another 400 to rendezvous with the station and then uh, 800 more to break orbit. That's 5,200. And then once you've broken orbit, you need about 3,000 to get to low Earth orbit. And so that's 8,200. We're a little bit shy of what we would like here, but um, pretty darn good, right? I mean, we're only a 12-ton vessel, so you, you can hardly beat that. Now, one problem is uh, we're going to have tremendous inaccuracy in our orbit, given that this was where our maneuver node was, and we're already here. That's something else over there. Jupiter Low Orbit Probe. So, we may have to go around and burn again. I mean, right now we're only in a 6 hour orbit. Let's try and get to an 8 hour orbit first and then do that. Uh, we don't have to worry about our Kerbal 
and the Van Allen belts in this. Okay, so this has some sort of residual sound that occurs. I guess life could be worse. I can put up with that particular sound in this case. Yes, all right. Um, let's just have mech jab. So obviously the use of cold gas hydrogen thrusters will probably be better with the Nerva and also with the Crewmaster. Remember, the Crewmaster is also a liquid hydrogen sort of system. And if we can dump the hypergolic fuels and use these instead, that would be a good idea. And again, it is something that people have researched and tried out and are going to use on Asus. And if they had nuclear engines, if they were using those in the 70s uh, because Nerva actually got funded, I'm sure they would have used hydrogen cold gas thrusters instead of fueling it with additional uh, hypergolic fuels. It'll be uh, just a sensible thing to do. Okay, so up here and has no operational SAS. Yeah, I forgot about that. We don't have any operational SAS. I'll have to watch out. Okay, um, for some reason every time I shut down the engine, the game doesn't like it. Okay, well I think that's the best start right there, even though it gives us a high inclination. It's not as bad as we would have gotten without the correction. Boil off seems to be controlled by our four radiators which are active and cooling at 30 percent or so. Yeah I don't know enough about how the sounds in KSP work to try and fix this engine and I'm sure it's actually fixed in more updated versions of KSP Interstellar. Obviously I'm using an old version in order to use it in KSP 1.1.3. The newer versions have a lot of fixes in. Okay, well that'll have to be good enough for now. So yeah, one reason you wouldn't want a nuclear engine for a lander is simply because uh, either it's gonna be very likely to tip over or you're gonna have a pancake that's gonna be tough to fit in any fairing. So, yeah. It's about the size of it. Now of course we're arriving at the moon with more Delta V than we normally would because we got that boost from the J2 stage. Okay, obviously we can't hold node as it wanders off but we also can't engage SAS so we have to be careful and it looks like we're going to end up with a relative inclination of 2.46 on this burn. But we are in orbit and we can make certain corrections after this point. Boy, it's a little bit difficult though with the node all the way out there now. Okay, well I mean it's not the best location, it's not the worst location. Of course, the downside of the cold gas thruster system is that the ISV of it is way less than the main engine, right? So you always want to use the main engine. Um, these get about a quarter of the efficiency of the, of the nuclear engine. And of course, they are less efficient than an aerozine N204 system. The thing is that we just don't want to lug more Arizine and N204 up to refuel it every time. Also, it's hard to, as I've mentioned before, manufacture Arizine and N204 on the moon. It is possible to get some hydrogen out from water on the moon, however scarce that might be. Okay, well, the station radically changed orientation due to a time warp of mine. I think I'll just dock on the, this docking port on the opposite side of the truss. I think it's, uh, well, it's accessible if I can click on it. Okay, must not crash huge hydrogen tank with a nuclear engine on the back into the station. 
kind of rotate so that Megan has an easier time doing the EVA. Okay, we have connection. And you can see how big the transfer demon is compared to the rest of the station. Okay, so time for Megan to uh, help out here. Okay, space, RCS, and we can't quite reach the inventory. Okay, hmm, I need to increase the inventory space. I, I don't think this is going to fit in her inventory. Definitely get one of those. Yeah, I need to just increase the inventory space, but even then I don't I think I'll increase to a thousand liters, not oh wait, no. Uh yeah, not uh enough for that particular ladder and but maybe enough for this ladder, but we don't have enough right now. Maybe I can pick up some of these Pegasus ones and attach some of those instead. The crew hatch is only on this side it looks like. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, H to attach. I, I don't really see it attaching. Okay, well, it's not doing a very good job of attaching to that tank. Hold on. This gate to cancel. Ooh, some pause. Maybe it'd be easier if uh, Megan grabbed hold of the pod first. Oh, no, there we go. H. Uh, it's a little bit faded, but I can still sort of see it. Is it like in the wrong place? No, it's fine. It says debris, but it shouldn't be. Okay. Can we attach another set down there? Very good. Uh, the solar panel is probably going to get in the way of that. No! No, 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 no. Um, G, grab. No, come on. Okay, wait. Escape to cancel. I thought you attached it. You pressed H and everything. Don't let it get away. Okay. Why don't you uh, maybe attach yourself to those uh, rungs there? Okay, grab. Oh, come on. game paused sounded like okay let's just try and use these um, do they seem actually fixed onto the thing does not seem so I don't know I mean looking at it they're sure wiggling around a lot So do these, actually. Maybe that's just how they are. This is weird. Hmm. Well, it's not Megan's fault if the mobility enhancers are weird. That's for sure. I think they're attached. I think maybe, maybe that solar panel is getting in the way. It's probably going to get in the way, isn't it? station seems to be rotating 
No, no, that's not the way I wanted it. Too heavy? No, no, no. I don't want that. I want this. No! No, don't do that. Oh, shoot. Escape, escape, escape. <laughs> we want the ladder rungs, not the entire service module. Well, not even service module. It's just the spacecraft. Mm. Okay. Alright, well, we grabbed those. I think, considering the station is totally tumbling all over the place, we should probably... Um, Yeah, let's just try and get back to her pod. This is all a bad situation. Uh, grab, if you can. Grabbing is tough right now. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Hmm, yeah, grabbing is tough for some reason. And lots of glitchiness. Well, at least apparent glitchiness. Can't ascertain whether there's a definite Kraken involved here. Okay, board. Okay, this needs to stop rotating. Set to kill rotation, and we are going to allow RCS thruster firing, even though that's, hmm, yeah, hopefully, that's a lot of RCS thrusters. The lag is incredible. Okay. Well, hopefully it's reasonably stable now, anyway. Nothing flying apart yet. As far as the little ladders are concern concerned, um, they're still attached. I don't know. I, I'm I'm certainly not eager to bring this down right now. Might need to think about this situation a bit. And that EVA really took it out of me. I think uh, we'll hold off till next time for the next crew master test. Sorry about that. But we did introduce a new craft in this episode. So and of course we expanded our lunar station. So I'll leave it at that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.